Alright guys, we love her back with more. Uh, witness, we're at the end of the game. On the challenge, this is podcast. Has but uh, yeah, we're uh, you know, uh, at the mountain. Really I do believe it's a long section though. And I think where so this they might take a while, sort of but we'll LGBT see. Community, as of late. Um, and I think they both showed a lot of fight, showed a lot of personality, showed a lot of athleticism. So we got like, climb it first. Had, like, very strong reasons to be brought back regardless of their sexuality, but that certainly helps. Um, mm. I really want Corey to get another chance. I feel like Corey got dealt a raw deal. I think he won the um, most unlucky on the challenge, like, stupid match game on the after show, and I agreed with that. Um, I think he has a lot of potential, and he was one of the most strategic, or one of the rookies who demonstrated the most strategic thinking, even though he wasn't able to sort of implement it. I think they also talked oh. about... Um, on the aftermath getting like he was trying to get the rookies together to vote out Kyle and Amanda as the only vet vet team but obviously couldn't get it off the ground at least he's thinking about it talking about it um Wait, so... I do think we have to talk about what what else came with Corey L targeting Huey and a lot of the conversation on the aftermath a lot of the conversation on Twitter and conversation on the show was how terrible Corey L felt about doing to Huey what had been done to him, which is underestimating him because he's gay or, or not sticking with um, somebody who also comes in with the same sort of representation pressure on their shoulders. And it just made me think, and obviously this is going on with the cookout on Big Brother, and it's like how much more someone like Coriel has to think about in a way that, like, Michelle uh, can try to target Bettina and nobody's saying boo. Like, as someone she perceives as weak. Even, and if, and if Bettina showed up and beat her ass, she'd be like, oh, good for her. Like, she beat me, I underestimated her. Like, we had with, um, Tori and... Who beat Tori last season, Big T? Yeah, Lisa Amber. beat Tori. Oh, was it? Oh, uh, and Lisa. Maybe, maybe and Lisa. I feel like Tori underestimated someone and ended up... Uh, you're, you're right. No, no, that, that, that sounds right, but I don't remember. Uh, I can't remember. Imagine us remembering. Yeah. Uh, but so I, I just think it's sort of it's it's certainly unfair that Corey has to be sort of thinking about this and feeling this even more because he is part of a, an underrepresented group on the challenge. Um, I hope one day he doesn't have to think about these things yeah. but I also do think he did judge Huey by his sexuality at least in part and it was interesting to see and and how the responsibility he's taken on and how Huey held him fuck off it. that's some bullshit it's okay like he was like you really hurt me I think they worked it out since they worked it out yeah. in the aftermath we'll see how that sort of progresses if they're ever back on again yeah oh fuck off wait wait it wasn't like Coriel, like he did actively go after Huey, but only because he knew he was going in. He wasn't like a position of power going after Huey Fuck. just for the sake of it. Like he Ah, uh, this is some bullshit. I fucking hate these puzzles. It's like it's based, based off like where you're standing. I mean it's it's tough to for I'm sure for Fuck, I don't think this is good either. Um but at that point he's just in strict survival mode and thinking who do I think I have the best chance to beat? And in his mind, I, I, I don't even think he was inaccurate. It, it would be to go against Huey. Uh, it didn't work out, but based off just the purely size difference between them... Are you fucking serious? I can't get through that? ...choice to make. Right. Um, and it's somebody that Fessy might be willing to put in, too. Mm -hmm. And it's and we saw the same thing happen with oh, the Survivor. Fuck lines. off. Like, that what the fuck is this? It's Survivor. It's not, um, you know, like something that people are marginalized for it's not an identity like it's you know so um it, it was tough it was tough to see i think Coriel's fuck off it, what the I fuck think, you know fair or unfair and has put a lot of weight on himself for it and then sort of takes it back a little in the aftermath right like he was like yeah. i never made a deal with you he said something uh, else, like, kind of like you know but i do believe he feels bad yeah, or he feels yeah, regret he, yeah a couple of times he apologized i apologize for underestimating all this stuff but then you followed up with, but I still like think I could beat you in almost anything physical. So like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like uh. I'm sorry for underestimating you, but let me continue to underestimate you. Um. All right. So we get to the first like, will they, won't they partner decision? Where shout out to Amber B for immediately saying no. So it's yeah. like not a rejection <laughs> to Huey. Like she says no before he can even I'm propose. Pretty sure it was right. Very funny reaction from, from Oh. Or no, from Amber. Hard no. 
I know I fucked Huey's up with someone this. who made his pick early on because he was like, I want someone experienced who's like not that good at the challenge. Like I'm fine. Like I think he wanted like a Nisa, right? He was like, she seems yeah. like she'll be nice to me about like physicality, uh, and it seems like he picks Nani for the same reason. Yeah, she. Uh, he says uh, Nani's got a good social game, not a great physical game, but got a good social game. Um, which I think is probably true a little while ago. I don't know how the so Nani social game is right now. Um, so might not go super well. I mean, it's pretty good if you count Casey as social game. Oh. I guess so. It is. It has really come up though. Like we have the Big Brother Alliance, and Casey and Nani are obviously a pair. Um, but we haven't seen anyone lump Nani in with them. So I, I don't know where the house views that. As like now a five sum basically, or not anymore, but before the uh, Big Brother Alliance broke down. I do think Gabo, in exchange for um, Huey, is like sort of neutral. I feel like Gabo is making Nani uncomfortable this whole episode. Was that just me? I don't know. I thought Nani was pretty complimentary. I mean, she had a couple things of like, oh, you know, Gabo's super easy to work with. Uh, He's friendly. I don't know. I, I didn't think pet her right. head. I feel like she was like, thanks, Gabo. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's definitely, I, I don't think it's a downgrade from uh, popcorn muscle. So I think Nani's in fine shape with, with Huey instead. And then um, Amber picks Devin, as we already discussed. And Ashley and Josh end up together. Caitlin Glancy says, are Ashley and Josh the messiest team of all time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty, you know, between Ashley and Josh, um, and Amanda and Kyle. Those are a pretty fun double pair. Now, we haven't gotten a lot of out of Amber and Kyle, okay, uh, uh, Amanda and Kyle yet, but uh, I there. expect to as the weeks go on. Um, yeah. So, Patrick and says, I forget when this happened, but I remember it happening. I thought this was funny. Patrick and said, Fessy, Josh won Big Brother for a reason. Me, a 28-year-old addicted to TikTok. What was the reason? <laughs> it's a great, so we've all been wondering. Uh, we've all been wondering. Okay, here's something. Lab, I guess. I don't know. Here's something I normally wouldn't read, but I felt like complimenting us. Taj said, I've been listening to y'all for at least four years or so, and I just looked up your faces for the first time, and I'm impressed. Be hot. Never change. No wonder this podcast is straight fire. In all seriousness, why was that not serious, Tosh? Yeah. Thanks for what you not true? It's not like a, just kidding, not... <laughs> Thanks for what you do and making, especially these most recent challenge seasons bearable. Y'all rock. Thank you, Tosh. That was very nice. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, I okay. Yeah, if you want to be nice to us, you could do so at rockleswebsite.com slash challenge iTunes and leave us a review. Uh, we have one question about the aftermath. They asked who was most likely to make it to season f- win season 40. Ryan Taylor says, do you think the challenge will make it to season 40? Yes. Uh, I would think so. I mean, the ratings are not good. Um, but I don't know. I think the MTV still loves the challenge, not as much as they love ridiculousness. But I think this is still, you know, one of their top shows. So I, I can't imagine it going anywhere. I mean, it's season 37, right? So three more. I, I would be stunned if we don't get to at least 40. We'll be here with bells on. <laughs> 40 oh, I said that sarcastically. I didn't mean that sarcastically. Mm-hmm. All right. Um,. Social media, so uh, I was on the social media today, and this just goes to show you how badly we need Megan Elizabeth, because I don't have a ton, but um, Corey said, you live and you learn when I eventually win a season of the challenge, this is Corey L. I want to get there without losing sight of what's important to me. I effed up and underestimated a badass competitor. I'm rooting for you now, Huey. Do it for the gays. Rainbow emoji, prayer hands emoji. Uh, I love this energy from Amber B. Middle fingers up with a picture of her with a middle finger up. To those who love to I talk shit with an exclamation point for the eye. About me behind my back, knowing I'm a good person and always have the best intentions. Dot dot. Yeah, I see you. Eyes emoji, strong middle finger emoji, hashtag lesson learned. I wonder who that's about. Mm. I don't know, but I really hope this is like Amber's coming out party. Like, obviously she had a great season last season Wait, winning. Can't much better than please? that, but... For personality-wise and, like, character-wise, I hope this episode really spearheads, like, Amber what becoming the a big focal point. Oh, the fuck show. off. She is 3-0 and now in eliminations and 1-0 and in finals. Yeah, I mean, look, this is, I, I think, by far her most impressive elimination win. Uh, there's no more, you know, take away all the little asterisks, but no matter who she beats, she's beating now anyone that's in front of her. So, good on her. 
Huey took 70% credit for winning this on the aftermath. That should be noted. Yes. Should be. Well, the split, he did the split, so. Alright, Ashley was on one. Why can't I just tweeting this? up a storm. Leave Huey alone, all caps, exclamation point. Uh, Amanda tweeted, you don't see me and Ashley by the pool because we slept till 1 p.m. every day, tilted laugh cry emoji. Uh, Ashley said, laugh cry emoji, okay, I sleep until noon and you until 3, dot, dot, dot. Stop lying to these people for laugh cry emojis. <laughs> um... I have no idea what she's talking about half of this. Uh, not Michelle, crying emoji. I love my pony girl, heart emoji. I do skin, is that what it is? Beach, fuck that. You deserve to win Survivor and more. Don't listen to these social media losers. <laughs> um, yeah, how about Michelle? First time uh, being eliminated. She brought that up Yeah, I saw your too. sucking kneecaps tweet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tag her. I think tagging her would have been fuck sucking kneecaps. Fuck off. Uh, Why is that a thing? Um, yeah, no, uh, again, uh, um, Michelle, I think, I was going to say it was like my biggest surprise, but I forget what I originally predicted about her on the challenge, and I think most people were extremely up on her. I think I was mm -hmm. more high on Michaela, but were, Michelle will be back. the reactions of those picks. For sure. I think Michelle will definitely be back, and I think she's currently the survivor to challenge crossover that I think has the most staying power. Yes. I would agree, for sure. Um, Ashley, lol, love you, Mish, but the queen is staying, hopefully. My only other female champ, gotta keep her around. Okay. Uh, she just tweeted at the Michaela B heart emoji. She's amazing. Okay. Um, well, okay. Do really don't know what happened because I do not remember and I never watch TV, which is sad, but y'all yelling at me because we're not partners no more and that sucks. I'm sad and I'm being serious. I do not remember. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, you already covered Amanda's tweet about Patina and Fessy. Um, Amanda said the Corey and Huey fight went on for a long time. Effing awesome entertainment. Loved it. <laughs> Uh, I Maybe just that's why TJ place. wants to like just be on the computer for that, so he doesn't have to sit around for it during the deliberation. Great point. Uh, Amanda said, "I'm sad they cut out a man yelling I love you as Mishvitz walked out." Three queasy emojis. I don't that time. <laughs> what a troll! <laughs> and that was the other thing teased on the up, like Fessy and. Uh, Michelle, maybe being a thing? I don't know. Seemed like this That was but, weird. But they were like teasing it. I don't know. It was very, that made me more uncomfortable than like anything else. That was that was mm -hmm. weird. Huey tweeted, Amber has never been in their alliance. She was just used by the looks of it. You're with me, baby. Let's do this. Two heart emojis. Amber wrote, big facts. I feel so dumb. Love you loads though, babe. And thank you for sticking by me. Heart emoji. It is weird to say... Amber was used by the Big Brother Alliance when she won. I feel like she should start flipping that and be like, I used the Big Brother Alliance because I won the freaking show. <laughs> True. Uh, but I think she, it's a better narrative for her to have been loyal and been screwed and mm -hmm. still won. Because like an she also take the badass approach, like, yeah, you know, I use you guys, screw that. I, you know, I dragged you guys again and I took home the title. You like my sports reference? It's like an and one. Right there. Very nice. I like that. Um, all right. Uh, a sh quick shout out to the yeah, like, article that? that Sydney Buxbaum, friend of Johnny Langan, uh, and Northwestern alum wrote. Uh, they, they did an interview. Oh, with I'm supposed Corey to hit on that point in the map. Michelle, uh, that has whatever. some interesting information what they would have done, what their plan was supposed to be, who they would have picked. Uh, so definitely check that out. Not that Entertainment Weekly needs us to plug them, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, Michelle tweeted, it's not fun to play with your back against the wall. It means that you have to do things and hurt people to survive. Truly hard to watch that deliberation. Corey said, if I had to lose to anyone, I'm glad I lost to the other day. These straight dudes don't deserve that honor. Like, smug blushing emoji. <laughs> it's like a face like, oh. Um, all right. And that's it from the Sosh. All right. Uh, drinking game. We had 12 total. Six mentions of the Veteran Alliance, uh, four uh, spy musics being played, just one shipping a couple. You care to guess which one Kyle is shipping? Kyle is shipping Big T and Logan. Mm, he's shipping Dial. <laughs> That's 
It's excellent. <laughs> uh, then one intra partnership disagreement between Ashley and Huey. <laughs> So unexpected, but so obvious. Oh, uh, you got anything to add for this week? <laughs> I'll add anything oh, someone fuck? references their kid or that they have mm. a kid. Not their whole family, not their girlfriends or wives or boyfriends or husbands, not their, the kids. Okay, I get now why how this works, uh, but I'm gonna take, it's fucking dumb, uh, though. I'm going to take a suggestion from Jesse uh, at the jerk saying, uh, there's a couple mentions of Kyle's teeth. So I'm going to bring that back. Anytime Kyle's teeth are mentioned or they add a little special effects to show the whitening of it, uh, anything Kyle's teeth gets, uh, you yeah, know, shown. Oh, I got God. Beep, beep. Uh, I, also, I, was got, I was waiting for you the entire episode for you to do the beep, beep at any moment, like Beetlejuice again. Uh, I was going to have it ready for you. You didn't do it. I was ready, though. No, oh, shit. no, but I did read the full Wikipedia of Candyman, okay. so um, it's like I have seen it. <laughs> oh, perfect. You saw the movie. This is so confusing. <laughs> uh, for Beep? this week. Beep! <laughs> for this week, you lost uh, one point for Amber B's elimination win. Uh, gained three points for Coriel's elimination loss at this point in the game. Uh, one point for Emmy for uh, no professionals, and lost a half point from Nani for being stolen. Now uh, I, you have a total. Go for it. I was gonna say I like our chances like projected into next week because if the veterans can hang together one more week, we got a, oh, a popcorn so muscles and Emmy at both our team, looking like the biggest targets. Yep. Good, good chance that I'm hoping to lose my fourth person. That'd be uh, fantastic. Now we were uh, so either going to lose points or win them. <laughs> right, right. We go for broke here. Uh, so you, you have two and a half points total for the season. Uh, for Scally, he lost a half point. Uh, lost one point for Wait, Huey what? for a winning elimination. Uh, three points, gaining three points for Michelle winning the elimination. Uh, a half point for gaining a half point from Ashley for being left by their partner. And once again, incredibly losing a half point for Devin being stolen. If we go on to win this, Devin losing one and a half points so far total for being stolen is going to be the reason why because that is just incredible well let's let's just break that whole thing down nani and devin lose points for being stolen and ashley gains a point for being left in what world yeah i mean the people that have been stolen so far uh devin three times nani and then tori twice so Devin's like that's crazy. Devin's the only person, only guy to be stolen. Well, for Wild. great strategic reasons, the entire Wild time, stuff. every single time. All right. <laughs> Wildly, nothing happened for Matt Lagori's team. So no changes. And for me, I only uh, got a game and a half point for Josh being left by the partner. So right now, uh, combined, we are at sixteen. They're at seventeen. That's very close. We are 16, going on 17. I mean, we're, you know, oh, we're in striking distance, anyone. maybe. It's anyone's game. I'm crushing Scout. This is going to be so confusing. Uh, you're hanging in there with Matt. Let's just discuss Matt's team for a second. You have the best picks in terms of you've lost three people straight up. Matt has had all three people who have been wow. deactivated. That's incredible. Just incredible. Yeah, he lost Tommy, Lauren, and Nam. All for uh, non-elimination reasons. I'm, I am very much uh, the, the pick I'm regretting. Uh, Esther in the second round, fifth overall. Not my best work. I was hoping for more of a fighting between her and uh, Tasha. It didn't happen, so we're along for the ride with Esther. That could be the reason why uh, we might lose this season. Um, we'll see. Oh, well. Very funny that all of almost all of our fourth to last picks oh. have gone home, um, but. I'm starting to I feel like these puzzles are like infinitely Matthew, more difficult. Uh, that it was, it was young Matthew spoiled somehow mm. that these people were going to leave. So I, I do believe we recorded before they began the season, but we mm, still a little sus. Mm. I think we recorded before they even left uh, the United States. So uh, if, he, if he was spoiled in advance, you know, good on him for predicting the future. And Wait. hopefully he can put his powers to better use. Um, he does have Ed, so he did have one of the replacement people. Yeah, but he, he's looking in pretty good shape, unless CT once again. Okay, Alright, like, these people. CT and Ed, four episodes in. <laughs> C, 
CT is not even getting a whiff of a mention. They're all starting to turn on each other. CT's just gonna just gonna win the season again. The relationship. Like, that's just. I mean, the these people are crazy. Like at, at a certain point, just put him in every freaking week. In the then he's gonna win again. <laughs> we'll see. That's a prediction. I mean, they're lunatics. Uh, two months. Yeah, they're not together. Two together now. I mean, they're worried about getting freaking Kells out, Coriel out. Sure, I'd be worried about them too, but they're not freaking CT. Sure. <laughs> and and also, who are you going to have left to take out CT? You're going to have right. to use yourselves, right? Fe what's Fessy's plan? I think Fessy, as we've said, is just cocky enough to think he can beat CT. But what's Kyle's plan? What's Devin's plan? I guess their only plan is putting in Fessy and CT against each other, which means you have to get into power, they can't be in power, and then who's going to be left to take the last person out? You need these big behemoth of rookies to take them out. You wasted it. Yep. Wasted. And they had it all set up. They have all these like big, young, strong rookies to go in early. Uh, so, oh my god, I hate the fucking And do it. Do we have more bits? I feel like we're done, right? I think our bits are done. Yeah, I think we're done. <laughs> because we, just other plugs. So what, what, what do you got going on? NGOG dropped on time, baby. Uh, you can check that out. We've got another. It's, we're, we're, so we're coming into the, the Jewish New Year this week. At, this week. But we've got another very messy NGOG queued up. So that will drop as oh my God, we talk on Wednesdays. Fuck, yeah. Anchor.fm slash new girl, old guy. Um, and now it's no, you leave me alone, otherwise you follow me out last week. There you go. I mentioned at the open, but I was, I made my post show recap debut. Uh, joining uh, the great Josh Wiggler at Chess. Talking about community. A lot of fun there, so you can check that out. Um, and then, yes, just follow me on Twitter. Colin with a C, Ryan with an I underscore. Uh, subscribe to robsbosite.com slash challenge iTunes. We'll be back next week for episode five. Until then, what's that at? Have a good one. What's that to listen to? Oh, all the Sprout 41 stuff. Not down. Uh, bring uh, uh, links up. And sometimes I don't let things get me down. And sometimes I need to be aware of it. Wait a minute. Who is this? I need to be down oh, it's David, more. right? And so I'm very keenly aware that that's something that I have to bond appropriately to. But it's definitely uh, going to be something that I'm going oh, to Oh, this is the wrong one. Shit. Roar. Roar. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I actually can relate to this. And now I know it's a little bit of like, well, my weakness is that I, I take bad news too well. But this is actually something that's very applicable to my home life. Because uh, sometimes, like, when you're with your spouse, like, they, they want to complain just for, like, the sake of complaining. Uh, but I always try to chime in and I'm like, okay, how can we fix this? Like, how can I help you? I was like, you know what, sometimes I just want to just, like, gripe about something. Mm. I just want to shout into the wind. Don't try to fix the wind in my favor. Just let the wind blow. Mm. So I very do much feel that from David's perspective of like, not everything needs to be fixed. Uh, like another surgeon had trouble with on an sure. island show. You know, you have trouble fixing things sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know necessarily though, uh, like I, I'm, I'm not really seeing how that pertains to Survivor where it's almost like that, uh, like if his tribe loses a challenge and then he, it won't bother him, but he has to act like he's sad. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it, maybe like someone gets blindsided and he's, you know, he wants to, they want him to stew in it and like be angry alongside. Mm. I'm not sure. Let's go back to the bluntness thing for a second, though. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, let's let's take a bet here, Rob. How much do you think his, his promise of I'll only be blunt in confessionals will actually be held up over the course of the 26 day game? See, uh, I'm, I'm worried here because I feel like that David may know mm. everything there is to know about survivor but i almost feel like that i would rather if i was going to bet on somebody like i i would almost rather would uh bet on somebody with like all of the social grace in the world and not the, having the game knowledge like i feel like that that person like i feel like might have a better chance where i feel like that yeah. so much of the game is just all about not even necessarily like the strategic moves that you make but it's just how people feel about you at any given moment. Yeah, I'd be intrigued to find out. Obviously, we can't, like, canvas people in David's life, but I'd love to hear, like, their opinions about him, you know? Because while he does say, like, yes, I talk to everybody, I would love to hear how they perceive him because I could see this, and I, I don't want to because I think he's going to be a great villain. I could see this very easily going south for David. Mm -hmm. uh, I 
I can oh, see yeah. something where he feels like he needs to like take control or like be more of a commanding voice because he's tired. Uh, you know, he said right, one of his pet peeves, uh, I believe, was uh, That's be my pet peeves revolve around people's incompetence, laziness, and lack of self awareness. Mm -hmm. His three words to describe himself are determined, passionate, and stubborn. I mean, I could see something, Rob, as soon as like day one. Oh, don't put that. Don't put that over there. We can't be. But why would I you want to build sense. a lean to? The rain's coming in. Like I could very so easily. So are see you that saying happening. that I well, can't? I think that's also another thing about uh, a. a, a Doctor, but it's fucking somebody, uh, in, in his field when he's in the operating room like i don't think that it's a lot of like consensus building again i am not a, a medical yeah, not, professional not, not surgery by committee but yeah I, I don't think it's like okay all right oh what, what do we all think we should do? it's like all right get, like all right this 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 uh and i'm sure he must be like he says he talks to all the people like at the hospital but i do think that you know where you, so much of Survivor is just about the like you know, all of the like little like interpersonal relationships that you have with the other players that are out there. Like I think that's the thing that I, I'm not even sure it can be taught. I just think it's fundamentally difficult to hide a part of yourself while playing Survivor, and I think we'd all love to be you know uh, the nicest person in the game and then be Courtney Yates lighting people up in confessionals. I just think it's easier said than done. And look, I am more than happy for David to, to prove me wrong so here. How do we do I just this? can't help but think that, like, eventually in his downtime, in those spare moments, like you're saying, like, something's going to tick him off. Yeah. He, he's going to get pissed off at somebody, and then they're going to want to get rid of him. Again, 26 Fuck days off. is going to help him. Yeah, from that perspective, like if if they're focusing on challenges and immediate strategizing, maybe those social graces, graces, social niceties uh, can maybe go out the window a bit more. But I can definitely see a path. I hate this. For him I hate this so fucking now, look, much. Bradley, Who the fuck thought like, this was a good idea? Really the fucking in camera base. That maybe social puzzles. graces can maybe be outweighed by strategic fuck. positioning. I could absolutely see that with David as well. Okay, okay. I'm supposed to All right, do this. back to David. What's the best yeah, it's advice like, it's you received in the before way. coming out to play? The best advice I received before I came out to play was from Rob Has a Podcast, and it was ask people that are close to you what bugs you or how I bug them. And when I asked them that, their answer was, don't be annoying. Don't list a list of complaints. Keep those to yourself. And they said, just be intentional about it. What? Roar. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Okay, good. Consider your kneecap sucked. <laughs> All right, uh, Mark, whatever time this is uh, for Full Bloom on uh, this podcast. Like, how do I get through this, then? So, uh, Adrian, okay, good. Yeah, I mean, good Good that he did that. I just said that people should have, he should have done that in the past. So, at least he goes in knowing that. I don't yeah. know if he'll succumb to it, but at least he goes in with that knowledge. Do you remember ever giving that advice? I mean, I, I'm sure it's it's it sounds like something that uh, I have said uh, in like other like interviews with with people. So I mean, story checks out. Yeah, I think I think it makes sense. Like it is the best thing of hey, you're the people who know me most. I obviously can't get a sense of myself really. What do you think of me? And look, how how am I supposed to do? I'm so fucking life, They'll want to sort of gild the lily a bit, but uh, maybe go to like those secondary acquaintances who don't really know you and see what they say. But he at least walks in with Wait, like what? something he wants. Uh, to I'm so God. fucking and dumb. Fuck this puzzle. Fuck that's this game. Still break yeah, like, fuck Again, that. I that's such bullshit. Much prefer a person who like at least. He knows what the issue is as opposed right. to uh, the person who what? has no oh, okay. idea why they might struggle. Yeah, that's very, that's very, very true. Like, if it's to thine own self, be true. He's already being true to himself to begin with, and he's just more so, you know, uh, trying to put part parts of himself away rather than letting it all out and being like, oh, I guess I should not do he that. He has the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Prognosis negative. Okay. All right. Uh, back to David. What theme, either from a previous season or one you can create, are you hoping or expecting your season to be? I'd say Brains, Bronze, Beauty is a just a fun setup that I uh, have loved just because of the, the differences that you saw in both of those seasons. Uh, just the quirkiness of the brains, the just the, the characters that you were able to get in those two seasons just made for a hugely dynamic cast. How will you leave your mark on the game? I believe I'll leave my mark on this game by being brutally honest and professional. Inefficiency, laziness, 
regular stupidity drives me insane. I will block that from my gameplay. You will see that in my confessionals, but it will be a, a intentional night and day between my feelings that are expressed in, in confessionals versus the gameplay where I have an under lockdown. And that is really a, a dichotomy that exists in my everyday life as a physician. Okay, well, David, we love to see it. It, it would yeah. be incredible. This, this is going to be incredible TV no matter how long he lasts. Yeah. He is going to just, like, slice and dice his way through people like he's wielding a scalpel. Is that everything? Uh, and I'm very excited yeah. about the confessionals. I mean, what he's talking about pulling off is something that I can think of maybe, like, you know, three or four people in the history of the show that they've been able to pull this off where they present one thing to everybody there and then are just very cutting in confessionals. And those players are like Suri, Natalie Anderson. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about elite, elite players. Yeah, so here's the thing. Listen, I'd love to be wrong for great TV sakes. Wait, what? I think David's going to flame out here. Uh, and I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's going to be for incredible television. Uh, but I think David, to your point, has very lofty prospects for how he would do in the game and while i do really get a lot of what he's talking about here and i think he's very well studied in the game i think he's very well studied on oh, himself okay. i just don't know if he has those qualities to your point rob to achieve what he wants to get done all right uh i guess we'll end here next uh, episode on graphic uh, that, that got me very pumped up